In this question, a 54-year-old male is brought to the emergency department by his wife after he began having difficulty speaking. So he started having difficulty speaking. On exam, the patient is able to state his first name and can correctly point to different body parts on command. When he is asked about the onset of his symptoms, he responds, I weak morning, and becomes very frustrated. The patient likely has a disease process affecting which of the following brain areas, A, B, C, D, or E, or F. Now this is quite obvious that the patient understands what the doctor is saying because he can point to different parts of the body. On exam, the patient is able to state his first name. So he can say, say state his first name, not the last name. He can state. So he understands that he's, he, he's been asked for his name and can correctly point to different parts of the body and command. That means he has no problem understanding what the physician is asking. The problem is when he's trying to say something. When he's asked about the onset of his symptoms, he responds, I weak morning. That means he's, sa he's saying, I, f I felt weak in the morning. So he understands, but he's having difficulty communicating and becomes very frustrated. So it's very obvious that this is Broca's aphasia. Okay? And Broca's aphasia, exactly where is Broca Broca's area in the brain? Let's see. So in this picture, we can see this fissure right here between C and D. That would be the central fissure, right? If the central fissure touches the sylvian fissure, which is around here. So that's how we know that this is the central and the sylvian. This is the sylvian fissure. And right in the middle of the sylvian fissure, we have the central fissure. Now, on this side, on the, on the right side to your right, uh, we have E, this is the Wernicke area, and that's fine, okay? And on the other side, on the side of the frontal lobe, we have B. This is the Broca's area. This is the inferior portion of the frontal lobe, which becomes a Broca's area. Now, I'm pretty sure you're thinking at this point that what can you tell me what, that I really don't know about this question? I mean, I'm sure you have come across this question a lot or come across this topic a lot. So what can I tell you that you probably, you know, might not remember or might not know at this point? So what I can tell you is that Broca's aphasia is able to communicate meaningfully, okay? This patient can communicate meaningfully, but speech is slow and consists primarily of nouns and, and verbs, okay? Because they cannot, it's not smooth sailing for them. It's broken down, so it consists primarily of nouns and verbs. So that's why I was so sure that this is Broca's aphasia. So that's one factor. Secondly, speech may be punctuated with pauses. So they will say a word, pause, say a word, pause. Again, we can see that there is pauses in between sentences. Again, I know that this is Broca's area because of that reason. And the region... This Broca's area is the region which is responsible for all communicative motor planning. So they plan it, what they're going to say, e e even if it's writing, even if they're signing their name, they're planning to sign their name. That is also something that you're going to see in Broca's area. So I think that's kind of unique, right? Because they will have difficulty writing and signing. You might think, okay, this is not motor as in, you know, motor uh function of the hands, but they're planning to sign, so their understanding is in the brokers, and then they're planning to sign, so they're going to have difficulty signing any document. So maybe that's also something interesting that I found that I usually probably would not think of brokers in that, in, that, uh, in that way. Another thing that I think you might not remember so easily is, obviously it's in the inferior frontal lobe, I'm sure you know that, and it's in the, it's usually this Broca's area is in the dominant hemisphere, and this hemisphere is usually called the Broadman area 44 and 45. I don't know if you really have to remember it for the exam, but I feel I would remember it for my exam. So this is the Broadman's area 44, 45. This area is in the do it's in the dominant hemisphere, and it it's a left hemisphere that is mostly dominant. Last of all, I want to say that whenever we're looking at a cross-section of a brain like this, where we can see the, 
uh, central sulcus here and the ciliary fusion like so. Can you tell me how will you see um, the different uh, arterial supply? I know this is not related to this particular question, but how would the arterial supply look like? Okay, so the anterior cerebral artery would kind of supply until here. This area would be supplied by the anterior cerebral artery. And then from this cross section, this entire area from here onwards would be supplied by the posterior cerebral artery. And the region in the middle is going to be supplied by the middle cerebral artery. Okay, this would be supplied by the middle cerebral artery. Okay, so I just wanted to put it out there because we're doing the cross section. So that's my interpretation of uh, Broca's aphasia. You can read up more on this kind of uh, blood supply from page 442, first state 2012.